how's it? Hang loose. Welcome to Mongoose Max Y, the... Yeah, it's Saturday. There's no newspaper, but there's an online paper. Well, we can do a little little vlog and news. Of, that's the Lahaina banyan tree on in Maui. The Lahaina banyan tree. It's, it's getting they're they're fixing it. They're, it's like about fifty percent. <laughs> it could be fifty percent. So they're gonna take little things and stick them on. They're kind of like grafting, I think. See, has that, that little see the little little thing that's sticking out? It's growing. It looks like a little um, carrot. That's what it looks like. <laughs> well, my channel's going down the tubes with viewers. I mean, thanks for viewing, thanks for watching, and I'm glad you, um, you know, spend a little time watching this stuff. It's kind of fun. I'm trying to do fun stuff, you know. Um, but um, I don't know. All my little gimmicks might, might not gonna help me. No, Ankylosaurus not gonna help. Ah, lights? Weird leftover lights ain't gonna help. Anyways, I don't know. I'm just I'm. If I drop out and don't do stuff and I'm sporadic, it's not because. It's more like me taking a break, you know, editing and time and. <laughs> I get banging my head against the wall, and I don't know what I'm hoping. I just just do what I do. I should say, you know, I'm I don't have I don't have any hope in YouTube. I just do it because it's like a little sandbox to play in. That's kind of what it is. So today, um, I know my um, viewer, my subscribership is is going down because of probably because these are long. Sorry for being long. <laughs> no time to ghost tube. Oh, get to turn this up. A little ghost tube action. We command it. We command it. Oh, see, the spirits on the other side. <laughs> Coming from an app, free app, no less. I meant it. I meant it. Maybe there is something to it. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, when I get a little political, you know, it's news and politics, and I get a little political, and I have some political science background, so it's just sort of ingrained. I had to do well before, but let's do a little politics stuff, and, um, you know, I guess what am I expecting? You know, if you have an opinion, if I have an opinion on politics, and the country is pretty much divided, I'm going to piss off half my viewers in on average statistically. So... Um, someone sees this or someone, anyways, <laughs> Trump, <laughs> he's, he's in New Hampshire and he's going to go to the next one or whatever already trying to get on the ticket as the nomination for the uh, GOP ticket for president. And um, the GOPers, 60% of them said he's A-OK -okay even if he's convicted. 60%. If he's convicted, we'll still vote. We'll still put him on the ticket. He's, he'll, he's OK. 60%. What? I, I, I don't even know anymore. I don't. Convicted. They're trying to think he has total immunity. He don't. He might have immunity from civil trials while president, but he's not president. And so he's open to all that civil suits and he's open, well, when it was committed. But criminals, criminal cases, criminal suits, criminal law cases aren't, you don't get immune to that. There's no immunity, even his full sitting president if a president gets impeached, because when they're president, they're doing president stuff. When they get impeached, then they're no longer president. But they can still be prosecuted for criminal stuff. And that's the fact. Jack? <laughs> and they're trying to flip that around and say, you know, they can't be charged criminally unless they're impeached. Or it's... So that's all in the courts. The courts are going to decide, but it's already set where you know what they're going to say. So I don't know. I don't even how how is that going to work if he's 
if he's convicted and he's a criminal, then doesn't he have to serve time? So is he gonna be president from the prison cell? I mean, how does that even work? I mean, why are they even doing this? This is just nuts. You know, look, here's my prediction real quick. Trump is not gonna be able to do it. So it's gonna be a battle between Haley and DeSantis for the Republicans. And um, they're gonna pick one. And whoever they pick, it's not gonna compare to the Biden. So Biden's gonna win. And then they're all gonna be pissed and they're gonna do all this hullabaloo. And that's my prediction. That's what's gonna happen. And I'm not even trying to be partisan at all. I'm just like going, just the mechanics. Anyways, I just lost all my subscribers again. Okay. But so I'm gonna change up a little bit today. Instead of like the vlog and news so much, I'm gonna do a little movie review. I'm gonna do a little movie review on a kind of a, mm, I would say a B-rated movie, kind of cruddy. I'm not gonna recommend you go see it. And so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna say you're out of hand. There's spoiler alerts galore because help me, help me, help me. It's about the space station ISS. That's the movie, ISS. Oh, oh, ISS, oh. So, ISS is the International Space Station. It's been up there. You might mistake it for a UFO or a shooting star, <laughs> but it goes consistently across the sky if you see it. It's not easy. It's been up there for the longest time. It was all the rage back in the day. <sighs> it was a cooperation put together thing, cooperation, American and Russian space things. And it was kind of like the hope during the Cold War that of cooperation between Russia and USA. This is like Soviet type Russia. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, it was good for what it was. I mean, they're testing rats and weightlessness, effects of weightlessness and stuff like that. <laughs> And they live on there and they try to make endurance, endurance record because they're, they're running out of experiments, out of experiments to, do to do and weightlessness. And weightlessness. I, don't I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. So it's it was a thing back in the day. And um, it's still going on because they're doing space stuff. Got to do space stuff. <laughs> space stuff. And as they're doing space stuff, I had another one. Okay. They're doing space stuff. Um, uh, well, here's the movie. ISS. So it's a, you know, it's about an hour, 40, hour, 30 minutes long, you know, so if you wanted to know what the International Space, the ISS Space Station looked like from like maybe close up or what it looks like inside or maybe a couple views from space, um, yeah, you can go see it, you know, I mean, movies are expensive though, it's not worth the ticket to see. Go National Geographic, get some pictures. Brother. But here it is. ISS. They go up to the space station, right? And so I mean the movie doesn't have um it's missing something. It's missing um like cinematography or it's missing um good writing. <laughs> It's kind of missing, they try, but it's missing character development. They just kind of rush into this. Basically, they have a big fight on the ISS. I thought it was kind of comedy. That's what, in my initial, I heard the word comedy. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. All this crazy little stuff that happens. or But it was a fight. It was a battle. It was kind of a brutal battle, too. I mean, there's stabbings and drillings and kind of you know not quite john wick but you know it's getting like that avenue um basically it starts off where they're going up there and uh the new american crew is going to dock on the space station and meet the russians that are up there at the point you know or the ones that are there i don't know if it's yeah it's like Russians are there, and here comes the American crew. And so they're there, and there's like this three little knock thing. So they have some, I don't know, repeating um, themes of three knocks that the Russians knock. Ah! 
Yeah, I hope this isn't too long. So, um... They are on the space station, and they um, have all these tropes, which is these dumb little things that they've done in other movies, like the, I don't know how to speak Russian. I will teach you Russian. This word means placebo. This, it means thank you, or, or something. It's not that cornball, but here's someone teaching someone Russian, you know, oh, that's what that means in Russian. I'm doing the accent for the American. <laughs> okay. Uh, the learning Russian words. Now, wouldn't you think, I'm, you know, that's such a trope. Uh, I guess audience involvement. But it's such a trope with um, those movies. It's been done. It's been done, done, done. And not only that, it doesn't make sense. If American astronauts are going up into space and they're going to meet uh, cosmonauts, they're going to brush up on their Russian beforehand. We got those little programs, you know, the Rosetta things. Oh, repeat after me. They're going to learn some Russian before they go there. They're not going to be like, this is what this means. And, oh, I will be working very closely with you, but I speak Russian. My, my America... Shut up, ghost box. <laughs> Talking here. They're, I'm going to be speaking. My American is not that good. You know, all this, this is just dumb. You know, I don't know, but uh, they do that. You're like watching it going, wait, didn't they do that? And, okay. And it's Cold War, so, oh, they're going to have this little, like, little buddy. We're having a little buddy. She's been up here 50. No, no, now it's Arnold. She's been up here 50 days. Um, then, um, don't make fun of Gorky Park. Man. That song, Gorky Park. I was okay when it came out for a while. Then it's like, oh God. You know, the, the, don't make fun of Gorky Park. It has special meaning. It, this is sort of dumb. Then it happens. World War Three erupts on Earth. Boom, boom, go the mushroom clouds. Look out the window. What is that? Boom, boom, boom. Earth is annihilated. It there's a war breaks out between the Russians and the Americans and Earth is just up in flames with nuclear explosions. <laughs> and they're just going, the, tell the, uh, tell, keep the Russians away from the windows. Don't let them look out the windows. Because you can see the whole face of the planet Earth is like in flames. Then there's a problem with the antenna. Is it a real problem? Well, we'll find out. There's a problem with the antenna. So the guy goes out on a space walk to fix the antenna. Now he's out on the spacewalks to fix. This is like before they get the orders to kill each other <laughs> from their respective governments. So he goes out from the spacewalk and it's like, ah. A little to the left. Oh, don't don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, a little, and and the world is already boom boom in the background. It's, that's what's already happening. And the the Russian guy goes snips the wire, so he can't hear him. And it's just like in two thousand and one, when Hal the computer makes the guy uh, go out on a spacewalk to fix the antenna, and he. Cuts him loose into space, and he goes flying out into space. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Open the pod bay doors. And the guy's out, and he, he grabs the guy who was out for the rescue and all that. And they find out there's nothing wrong with the A35 unit in 2001. There's nothing wrong with the antenna. And the same thing in this movie. They go to fix the antenna. The, the antenna's fine. But the guy uses the space arm and knocks him off into space. So, hey, there's a big, huge trope that they just flat out stole from 2001. This is not even a trope. It's like a giant plot point. Now, they have secret orders to kill each other. Don't show the other, don't show the other part of the crew. Take over the ISS. Take, it to, take over the ISS, the other direction. So they're now they're trying to kill each other. Okay, I won't... It's, uh, uh, 
<laughs> you know, one has a drill and the other one's like walking around with a... If you don't... The, the, the girl gets the little space flare fire guy, has a fire scientist for the fire gun. That's pure oxygen! And she's got the little space gun. It's... it's mm, what the hell? It's just like, the world is flattened. They're trying to... An ult, and they have their... She told me. Their plot point. Their, their monster. Monster, exactly. They're saving little, like, oh my gosh, is... One of the Russian scientists has successfully experimented and came up with a cure for radiation poisoning, which I don't think there is such a thing as a cure for that, but he's got a cure for radiation poisoning. So you got the whole world down there radiated with nuclear, I mean, this is like 8 billion people on Earth, but they got the cure. And so it doesn't have a significance, but that's supposed to be really significant because at the end, there's only two survivors. I won't tell you who they are in case you can see it. <laughs> there's two survivors that go back, one Russian, one American. And they're going back with the cure for radiation sickness tucked away in the back. And everyone else is dead and slaughtered. It's kind of like Manson family. <laughs> and they go back and they're like, going, well, where should we go? Where should we go when we go back to Earth? Like, who are we gonna cure when we go back to Earth? And and what doesn't make sense to me is the whole planet has been, you know, mutual destruction, World War Three, nuclear bomb stuff. So where are they gonna go? There's nowhere to go. I mean, let's go to a place that hasn't been nuked. How are they gonna land? Is what they're kind of questioning and then they end the movie like think about it over a cup of coffee with your friend that you saw the movie with you know it's like i don't know it lacks a whole lot of i mean you know what i wish they did which probably would have saved a lot of the movie i mean it would have made it a little bit more worth it to see is they do some cinematography because you have a space station what's inside and yet space everything outside so Big wide angle shots. You know, if we could rip off 2001, big space scene. The spaceship just floating there. Look how big, immense space is. And look how big these things are. And then they get inside the spaceship and like a, a just throw in lots of extreme close ups to show how cramped and claustrophobic it is. You know, like real close ups and, you know, like, you know, they're looking over the shoulder and there's like, you know, someone's face right here in their ear. And, the, and then like, you know, the little things they're playing with, you know, like, look, I, I brought, I brought this along for, for you. And, and the, the little, little small stuff, extreme close-ups. <laughs> might have, you know, some cinematographer, some visuals might have saved it. And some pacing with that uh, fight stuff, you know, like suspense. Like, uh, so it could have been better but it kind of like wasn't there's there it is the giant iss i'll give it a um, c minus what happened to my light the c minus oh my gosh c minus uh anyways go and see it if you want to though hey let's take a look at some hawaii news just real fast tripler settles lawsuit oh gosh that's army uh, military hospital army hospital Oh, they botched someone's surgery. That's why I go to Queens Medical Center. <laughs> Time off for more because she's like the the Olympic chick. <laughs> she's the Olympic girl. She's just like total girl power. Oh, and ISS has girl power. The Russian girl. And in football, we got the Pineapple Bowl coming up. So all these like uh, college teams. College teams going to be playing. All the So it's Team Malka towards the mountain and Team Makai towards the ocean. Malka and Makai teams, and then they got a bunch of different football players. I, 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 I don't know. And then, uh, I don't know, Raiders. <laughs> oh, I remember back in the day when you wanted to relax and just uh, take on 1991 when you had your prototype, uh, when you're to relax, your prototype AI uh, mannequin doll. An eight-year-old Selena examines the heart of a doll she used to help children understand what happens during an operation. The doll also opens up to reveal its organs. Oh my god. <laughs> this is like Velcro triple bypass. <laughs> a 
Oh god. Oh, I mean, I mean, how about, you know, just a little letter to the editor, something small. Take us out, take us out. Oh, BC, a uh, political cartoon. It, it's so below that, but wind chill makes more like, why do we have to live here? Yeah. Wind chill on those things, there's like b- below, like freaking 24, 25, 30 degree below zero. What the hell is going on? I stood outside, I had to do something in Montana, and I was outside in the dark trying to play an old miner at a haunted ghost town thing and it was six degrees my toes are frozen <laughs> so i was bundled up pretty heavy here find contractors doing the illegal construction stop finding the homeowners but find the construction the contractors who do illegal work they should check all permits for whether it is legal to do the work also cement companies that provide the materials that do the illegal work Without the publicity in the newspaper, suppliers should know when the homeowners are doing illegal work on their property or check with the city building department if they obtain their permits. It would be better than going to their homeowner after the work is done. Going to the court is a long process and costly after the work is done. Ernie Itoga, why and I? Well, thank you, Ernie. I guess you're involved in that sort of thing. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> what happened? Hey, they have, it's all corrupt in Hawaii. So, illegal permits, <laughs> construction, thing. contractor, big oh, development, big money. So, uh, yeah, the ISS, it's an, I mean, it's an okay movie, but it's not worth the 15 bucks. What the, f- you know, um, uh, whatever. Just remember, it, it ain't no 2001. But it's a little bit like, uh, it makes you think, if you were up on the ISS space station and the world was nuked in World War III and you're Russian, then didn't even, uh, what would you do, you know? Watching you. But um, you don't need to go to the movie to think that. <laughs> Anyways, have a wonderful day. Aloha to you. Oh, look, it's, the weather's turning nice now. Oh, look, okay, oh, look, there's a Maui. We see Maui, I like a lot in the background. Oh, Maui, recover Maui, you okay? Yeah, okay now, all right. Aloha, Ray. Gonna be a nice day, I think. Nice day, good day.